Last year, they became the second top seed ever to lose to a 16 seed in the first round of the tournament. What does Painter need to tell his team ahead of another opportunity for a title this year? The appointments are lined up. You waiting for somebody in there? Got an appointment. And it's not about what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. It's not personal. It's strictly business time. You and me had a private talk when you step into my office. It's step into my office with Michael Lombardi. Mr. Lombardi, we'll see you now. Stefan Diggs, step right in to Michael Lombardi's office. Take a seat, get comfortable. After the cryptic tweet that he posted over the weekend saying he's ready for whatever... Bills fans, NFL media has all kind of gone into a frenzy here. And where there's smoke, there's often fire, as you alluded to earlier in the show, Michael. We've seen reports we should keep an eye out for a potential post-draft trade, although that contract is a challenge to move. What are you telling Diggs today as he looks poised to enter another drama-filled offseason? Well, you know one thing. You, You don't have to worry about getting cut because obviously there's value in you and you would, you know, it would be great for you if you got cut because then you'd be in the open market. But I think more than anything, ignore the noise. And what you have to focus on is getting your career back to where it was three, four years ago. You're going to have to have the best offseason, the best offseason, because when doubts start to creep in on players, when you see their average go down two yards per reception, people start to wonder, especially when you hit that magic number of 30, which isn't old, but it's old for football. And so this is really on you. You can't control the noise. You can't control the narrative. But what you can control is your conditioning Mm -hmm. and your dedication. And I think that's really what's got to happen for you. You got to have the best off season in terms of training, in terms of rest, in terms of hydration, All those things, you've got to put money into your body to make sure that when you go somewhere, whether it's back to Buffalo or whether it's another team, you're at the greatest level of conditioning you've ever been in your life. That's the only thing you can control, and that's what you need to work on. He's a minus 235 favorite to return to the Buffalo Bills. The Cowboys, the next shortest shot at 4-1. to Buffalo, plus 550 in the AFC. Third shortest shot on the board. They're the fourth shortest shot to win it all in 2024. Again, he is expensive, though. $27.85 million cap hit in 2024. The second highest on that roster, second only to Josh Allen. Let's head to a little college hoops conversation here. After ending the regular season on a five-game losing streak, Long Beach head coach Dan Monson was, inf- was informed that he would not be returning as the head man next season. What was his response? Oh, just to win the Big West tournament and an NCAA auto bid. How should Monson approach this tournament run and the offseason ahead for him, knowing that he will no longer be at Long Beach? I think you embrace the moment, right? I think you embrace the moment, and that's what you've done. And I commend you for your willingness to put everything into these games, knowing that the end of these games was the end of your career at Long Beach State. And that takes a lot of mental toughness to do that. So you deserve that. But what you also deserve is to enjoy this special moment, this run that your team is on that no one thought you could accomplish, including the athletic director at Long Beach State. So... You can't control what Long Beach State thinks, but you can control your relationship with your players. And it's been remarkable. It's been so much fun to watch. And how you've handled this is teaching other people how to handle adversity. And I think you need to be commended for it. I think it's wonderful. And whatever happens starting on Thursday night, if it's one and done or if you can win two, get to Sweet 16, just enjoy every second and enjoy the relationships that you have with these players because this will last a lifetime. One win never does. Yeah, and, you know, they're a team, too, getting 20 and a half points in this opening round matchup against Arizona, who, despite their power rating, like, has been beatable. We have seen that. Like, getting that many points and knowing the motivation that those players probably have for their head coach in that moment and what he's going to try to do, I don't hate taking the points in that spot. Let's go back to the NFL. Arthur Smith fired as head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, uh, replaced Matt Canada in Pittsburgh as their offensive coordinator. Now he's in charge of creating an offense to suit Russell Wilson as a starting quarterback and Justin Fields who they brought in, a guy who caught a lot of flack in Atlanta for not getting the most out of his weapons and utilizing them properly. What are you telling Arthur Smith today his approach should be to bring the best out of this QB room? 
Well, I think Arthur knows that the best way his offense operates is with a strong run game. Whether it's handling the ball off to Warren and I.G. Harris, he's got two good backs on the Steelers. He's got a really good tight end in Firemuth. And he's got the ability to stretch the defense with Pickens. So this team has got skill. And I think it starts up front with the offensive line. He's got to get that to where it's blocking well in the run game. But I really think Arthur Smith knows what to do here. Because I know this is going to sound ridiculous because one guy won a Super Bowl and another one hasn't. But Russell Wilson at this point and Ryan Tannehill are very similar in what they do. You're going to have to run the football. You're going to have to play action pass for both of them. And you're going to have to hope their athleticism will make some loose plays on the move. And I think Arthur's got enough experience with what he was able to accomplish in Tennessee with this area. And I expect him to do a good job. We have a very difficult time where we tend to evaluate a head coach's performance over his offensive coordinator's performance. And that's just not fair. Arthur Smith's a very good offensive coordinator. There's a lot of reasons the ball didn't go to certain places in Atlanta. And it wasn't because they were they were the greatest offensive team on turf. London doesn't have great speed. Pitts was injured. And so, therefore, they weren't the same. They didn't really have a tight end. So, I think Arthur Smith comes in and runs the Tennessee offense with a little bit more of a change of pace and utilizes the ability where Wilson won't turn it over and rely on a, on that play-action pass to make plays down the field. Even while I've been a little bit on the fence still about Arthur Smith, we know no matter what, he's an upgrade from Matt Canada. That much is clear. And the Steelers in yeah. the division in the AFC North right now, they are still the longest shot to win it all. But with some of the moves that they have made, they've gone from 12-1 to 1 to plus 850 to win the division. Back to college hoops. We yeah. thought about putting in our producer, Elliot Bowman, in the office today, but we said, no, we're going to leave you out of it. We'll just put Matt Painter <laughs> back in, head coach of the Purdue Boilermakers, who yeah. are once again a number one seed in the tournament despite losing in the Big Ten title game to Wisconsin. Last year, they became the second top seed ever to lose to a 16 seed in the first round of the tournament. What does Painter need to tell his team ahead of another opportunity for a title this year? I don't think uh, Matt needs to talk to his team about anything because every team is a new team. And though this, these players are not responsible for what happened last year. Some of them were on the team, some of them weren't. But they have no responsibility. It's a new year. What I think Matt has to do is really focus on himself. What did he do? How did he prepare? What mistakes did he make? I think he's got to have, after that loss last year, you almost have to have a... I'm never doing that again list. That's an important list to have as a coach. I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. I'm never. And then remind himself, this happens to a lot of coaches. I mean, look, the New England Patriots win their last Super Bowl in 2004. And it takes 10 years for Belichick to win another one. Two Super Bowl appearances against the Giants lost both. Was there something going on in their playoff preparation? Was something happening that wasn't registering? And I think that comes down to Matt. I know Coach Belichick did a comprehensive study on that himself, and I would suspect Matt needs to do the same thing. Don't put the pressure that the media has put on you on your team. Can't do that. That becomes a real problem, right? Don't you handle the pressure. You stand in front of the team, right? You take accountability for the losses in the past, and you tell people it's going to change. And don't coach scared. Do not coach scared. Don't coach to think we're going to win the game. Play your style and get the players to relax. That's the most important thing. And this is where Coach Walsh would talk a lot about in big games. And the first game in the tournament is the biggest of all. Because you got to win that one to keep going, right? And so you got to get the players to relax. you got to get them to understand there's no pressure in this game. Just go play. Yeah, get the first one out of the way. There have been some reports, Michael, that Matt Painter has been telling the story and showing film of Virginia, who, of course, was the first team to ever lose as a top seed to a 16 seed against UMBC in 2018. They bounced back in 19, went on to win it all. He's been using that as a, hey, look, it's been done before as kind of a motivator and shows, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. If you can dream, dream it, you can do it. Do you like that mentality of showing that it has been done? Why not us? Well, I, I think to me, if I were the coach, I would forget about what happened in the past and just start new, right? I don't want to bring up a negative to create a positive. That's not something I want to do. I want to be able to, to build off of it. And really, this is about me standing in front of them. I don't want them to have to feel the pressure that I feel every day when I go sit and talk to the media. Can I win a big game? 